हरि ओम देर इज अ कंटिन्युएशन ऑफ क्वेश्चनिंग बाय अर्जुन द बिगर क्वेश्चन इज answer is given by lord krishna earlier also pap punya krutam loka anushitva shashvati hi samaha shuchenam srimantam gehe yoga brashto bhi jayate he will be born in the house of pious and the one who is endowed with aishwarya then what is the need of again mentioning in this shloka the athava athava योगिनाम एव कुले भवति धीमताम धीमताम कुले धी मत धी इज द ओनली स्ट्रक्चर अवेलेबल फॉर एन एम्बॉडिड बीइंग दैट मींस फॉर ऑल द जीवाज द ओनली इंस्ट्रूमेंट अवेलेबल टू एक्सेस द गॉड or the brahma pada is dhi that is why gayatri mantra directly propitiated savitru dhiyo yona prachodayat dhiyo let the effulgence of the brahman endow the dhi because other than dhi there is no point no dhimatam that which has been living entirely upon the all pervasive aspects of such a buddhi or dhi which by itself is not creating anything in itself as a vritti or a vichara but it is acting as pure crystalline pristine conduit of the light of that bhoma or vastu or brahman through it such a person is called dhimatam and the yogi will be born or the person who has unfortunately thwarted his journey in a particular body because his journey is not thwarted he is existence is thwarted in a particular body so that he could take another body the question asked also was how rebirth gives this carry forward of knowledge and if the consciousness or the jiva like a river is supposed to go and mingle with the ocean then why after mingling with the ocean the river should remember the river the whole process needs to be understood in the perspective of evolution of consciousness consciousness in its entirety doesn't have any delimiting factor it is ekameva dvitiya so when there is one there cannot be anything limiting logically it is not possible that one is existing and it is getting limited if one is existing there cannot be any limit a parimita that which cannot be measured because measuring itself means beginning and end if it is the only one tattva that is existing and all pervading then in that case there is no question of having any delimiting factor however when the consciousness gets delimited as a part and parcel of the consciousness now question is consciousness cannot be part made into parts or parceled away but when it gets delimited in the form of mahakash and ghatakash the space cannot be divided into parts or limited but when the pot is formed the space looks as if entrapped in the pot which is called ghat akash which looks looks apparently as different than the mahakash but they are one moment the pot is broken 
the space inside the pot ghata akasha is the same with the mahakasha because it was never separated it got delimited by the pot similarly consciousness when it gets delimited by the presence of the body called upadhi upadhi is delimiting adjunct now that it has been delimited for whatever reasons avidya or maya whatever we call it and it is anadi the fact is we are bound bound by what bound by this delimiting factor called upadhi we are baddha and the only progress that can happen is to become mukta and mukta is in relationship relative to the baddhata that we imagined because moment the pot is broken the space was never bound space was thought to be bound because of presence of pot so in the evolution of consciousness the delimiting adjuncts are slowly 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 dissolved so that the consciousness that is residing in me as an individual jiva becomes one with the brahma brahmam satyam jagan mithya jivo brahmeva na paraha single line gist of kevala advaita or the advaita is jivo brahma na par so our journey when it is happening it is happening from having one upadhi to the next body again carrying forward the upadhi and how does the carry forward movement happens there is a rule the rule is called karma vipaka siddhanta in every embodied soul there shall be an action that is happening called karma which shall be based on the propensity that the individual jiva has attained because of its previous karma the previous leads to the future and this future becomes previous for the further future this is called karma vipak whatever has been accumulated earlier as desire ichha or hardened ichha called vasana has to be exhausted with appropriate vehicle or the body called upadhi so presently from the perspective of this particular shloka the question that is being by asked by arjuna is not a new question bhagwan shri ram asked almost the same question to bhagwan vasishtha in yoga vasishtha bhagwan shri ram asked bhagwan vasishtha muni that muni only the see the tone of the question he says hey muni shreshtha what happens to those who are on the different planes and have not crossed at the third plane the question is very very specific in yoga vashishtha same question is in general form being asked by arjuna here there he is talking about the seven planes of consciousness it's a clear cut mention of seven planes of consciousness meaning thereby the upadhi slowly starts removing the adjunct or the upadhi or the covering so that the consciousness gets more and more brighter and expansive till the time it reaches the utmost expansion and the answer given by them is by vasishtha muni is he shri ram any upadhi first starts with shubhechha shubhechha is was good resolve we all came for this satsang this is called shubhechha we all feel that we should not use this forum for any personal gains of marketing or getting any job or anything that is completely an anathema to such kind of satsang vyavahar is in vyavahar state we are here with a good resolve shubhechha no question whatsoever should be coming to our mind about personal gain through the satsanga the good resolve is to see the lord i want to see the lord i want to understand the lord i want to understand the shastra this is called shubhechha 
आफ्टर द शुभेच्छा आफ्टर दिस शुभेच्छा नेक्स्ट कम्स विचरण विचरण इज नथिंग एल्स बट श्रवणम एंड मननम यू कीप थिंकिंग एंड डेलिबरेटिंग एंड कंटेम्पलेटिंग वेन सत्संग इज नॉट देयर take the food from the satsang on saturday and keep ruminating on it till next saturday shravanam mananam is called vicharana a person who is doing vicharana is one plane above the shubhechha there are seven planes described in yoga vashishta once somebody shravanam mananam is perfect then he goes towards nididhyasanam moment he goes towards nididhyasanam where he starts attempting upasana he already reaches the plane of consciousness called tanumanasa now in tanumanasa there is a samshaya nivrutti now it is confirmed hard in the mind drudha nischaya that there is only one thing in this world and that is lord nobody else such a person then undergoes the meditation and the intense meditation which balaji maharaj described that only 3 years or 2 years or 6 months we even don't know the specific period guru deva went from tanumanase to satvapatti direct realization of reality such a person is called brahmavid so this is the fourth stage after even becoming brahmavid he goes to the next stage called asama shakti the fourth stage is called satvapatti fifth is called asama shakti in asama shakti the brahmavid person normally is aware of the world as well as he as an atman like guru deva when he was conducting the gyana yajna conducting the gyana yajna is in vyavaharika vishwa so he is aware of jagat but he himself was into atmanubhuti simultaneously two things in asama shakti they completely dissociate themselves as if they are in the sleep so even the body feeling is gone so the world doesn't exist anymore for them during that period called asama shakti in which they can be awakened back to the jagat by doing mantrochar in the ear generally a samadhistha person if he has to be brought back into the world you keep saying hari om or something like a mantra in the ear and louder and louder it brings him down from asama shakti you go to padartha bhavani a further deeper sleep so intense which we read in puranas in the little arthavada way that there was a rushi who was there and you know he just came out because there was absolutely ants over his body and then he asked which ear is this that reference is towards padartha bhavani it is absence of objects and duality in the state and the last is called turiyaga or the turiya where it is almost impossible to come down and generally the body just withers away now the fourth state itself is called brahmavid so fourth fifth sixth seventh there is no question of coming back so the question that is being asked by arjuna or bhagavan or shri ram is about the three first avasthas before you become brahmavid and that is why bhagavan is answering that dhimatam kule durlabataram because he is a person who has already arrived on the consciousness stage of tanumanasa and he is waiting to get into satvapatti or brahma with within no time so dhimatam kule idrusham janmam durlabataram naturally thousands and millions have been trying at the base camp there may be a crowd at the mount everest there are few and that too just below the ascent there are almost a few such a person for some reason because of his prarabdha has to terminate his life then 
he will be born again into it. Now, the question asked was, how do they go from one to the other? In the entire life, whatever we do looks like we are doing it through our body, that is Jnanendriya and Karmendriya. These are absolutely immaterial things. It is like seeing a picture on the television screen where everything looks beautiful, but there is no picture, there is nothing there. All that happens is sometime, somewhere at the back of the television, there is a cathode ray tube which is creating all this. All the pictures are stored there. From there, they are coming. Similarly, for us, all the actions that we do and all that we accumulate is not to be seen from outside. Somebody slaps somebody. This is only the screen. Behind the screen in the Antakkarana, which in terms of Sharira Kosha is called Linga Sharira, one stamp is made of your name. He slapped him. One stamp is made there. Oh, he did a lot of good work and charity, gave his own food to somebody else. Another stamp is made. All these stamps are made and collected into what is called as Linga Sharira or the Sukshma Sharira. That is the cathode ray tube of the television. When the screen is completely destroyed, the tube gets refitted to another screen which is working. So the body is like a screen changed every now and then. The tube remains the same which carries the picture. And which picture you will carry depends on which picture you have printed on it. So Linga Sharira, the very word Linga means mark, chin, sign. So the signs of what you have done, the mark of what you have done, the mark of what you are carrying is there. And the same goes forward. You retire some of the images, you inbuilt some of the images. Right now, by entering into satsanga and remembering Guru Deva, being a pious act, provided it is done from the heart, being a pious act, a good stamp is produced there. Now, for this good stamp to be exhausted, next time the body would be suitable. Now, remember, out of the three gunas, which guna is dominating decides the type of the stamp that we create. If tamo guna is what all the life we have thought, all these people who are enjoying the life today as a minister, as corrupt people, as murderers, in fact, for that matter, all the underworld dons with palatial houses and uh, Pablo Escobar having billions of currencies under the ground, etc., etc. Remember, all of these are the destitutes of tomorrow. Because Tamoguna Samskara has been done. Next embodiment has to be for the Tamoguna suitability. And a suitable body for the dark Tamas is stone, mountain, Achetana, Tiryagayoni, wolf, dog, Chatushpada. Because Tamoguna is there. You wanted to have everything from everybody for yourself. You will be a jackal. If you are dominated by rajas, rajoguna suitability body will be found for you. Rajoguna suitability, if in human form, you shall be always in action. Business after business after business after business after world's fourth richest man. What is he doing? Trying to become third richest man. I have one apartment on rental. I want one of my own Rajoguna. I have one of my own, but I am good if I have two Spruha. Asha, Apeksha, Akanksha, Yachana, Spruha, all Rajoguna. If Sattva Guna is dominating, then Vairagya has to dominate. If Vairagya is dominating, you will be born with a 
with a desire not to own anything. That is why in Purana all the stories start like ek gaon me ek garib Brahman tha. There was a poor Brahmin in one village. That is how the moral story starts. Why poor Brahmin? Why not rich Brahmin? The Brahmin here, I am not referring to the caste. The one who is pious and saintly is born as a poor person simply because Vairagya is inbuilt. Rajas is absent. And then what he does? He went for the studies in jungles. Why? Sattva Guna pushes him to do. Embodiment is for further enfoldment of the Guna and the Vasana corresponding that you are carrying. What is the advantage of all this system, knowing the system? To know which, where I am. In how much water I am standing, you come to know by this. What do I get in my thoughts as predominance? In my thoughts, the predominance is of having at least the new car I should have for myself. Rajaguna is predominating. How can I utilize this five minutes that I have got for studying furthermore in Bhagavad Gita? Sattva Guna. I wish I could really take care of that stupid fellow and I wanted to actually rule this company. Somehow I will become friendly to my boss and see that that account chief is fired and I get that tamoguna. Based on this, for those who have gone in the path of sattva for a slightly longer time, the question is for them. Arjuna is already on a sattva guna path for a very long time. He is a sadhana chatushta sampanna. As rightly asked and explained about this Nara Narayana thing. This Nara Narayana thing is basically talking about the same thing. In, in Nara Narayana, the, the dharma married murti or ahimsa and then the nara narayana was produced as they are called twins of bhagwan vishnu they have been referred in one parva of bharata mahabharata where prakrishna bhagwan himself tells arjuna that i am nara and you are i am narayana and you are nara ramakrishna paramahamsa also spoke something similar with vivekananda if we'll see the biography Devi Bhagavat Purana or Vayu Purana also mentions about it. And the functioning of the son of Dharma and his wife Murti or Ahimsa, the prince, is for Dharma Saustapana. Even when Arjuna got his Pashupatastra after fighting Bhagavan Shiva, Shiva himself then, became, because he had a fight with Shiva, and then Shiva appeared and then said, Oh, Arjuna. You are Nara, I am Narayana. Even when Arjuna was in the embryo, in the, in the womb, there was an Akashavani which said that this boy who is going to be the Kurunandana is the reincarnation of Nara. When the question is, if one has to reincarnate as man for the mukti, then the Naradeha Sreshtata is so great that Vivekananda has mentioned in his speeches that even the gods have to be reborn as humans to get the salvation, mukti. Why? They are the lords of the realms. They are in the three lokas. Enjoying the fruits of the pious deeds done earlier, but all the deeds are going to get exhausted sometime or the other. Yesya anta na vidu sura sura gana. Sura, dev also cannot understand yogi status. So dev, dev is nothing else but videha dev. Videya Deva is 
nothing else but a progressive stand of folding of consciousness at a particular level it is not the complete unfoldment that is why in kevala dvaita there is no theistic approach by shankara acharya he says god is something whose shoulder has to be used to ascend further god will not take further neither you are supposed to reach only to the god it might sound little confusing but it is a philosophical stance of kevala dvaita kevala dvaita says only and only the jnanam that brahmam satyam jagan mithya will only the is the end and god is form the part of jagat so jagan mithya that means lord the, the, the devas the ruling entities the ruling realm entities are also going to be exhausted for them also they have to try again to get out of this world whether it is at the end of the pralaya or during the pralaya, during the jagat period itself that is a different story so manushya deha is stressed because this is the body in which that only opportunity to get the visa for the brahmahood is issued and that is why gurudeva says more integrated a personality more spiritually becomes golden statement more integrated personality what is integrated personality more he moves from tamas to rajas rajas to sattva right now we are a combination confusing combination of sattva and rajas saturday morning for 2 hours sattva dominates immediately after 9 o'clock rajas dominates and then again and again rajas and tamas they play hide and seek with each other the integrated personality is more which is inclined towards this sattva guna and then he becomes more spiritual what happens with that spirituality is you feel like more and more doing things that will help you in unfolding the consciousness you more feel like reading more gita voluntarily today we have put a rule to us and we also speak like that kuch nahi 2 ghanta to hamara kam se kam bhagwan ke naam pe chala jata hai na right now our attitude is like you know few minutes are here and there and i'm i'm at least trying you know there is nothing like trying in this path there is a consistency that is required in the path called abhyas which shall then lead to what is called sahajata how many of us feel uh, you know i oh, i am feeling so restless i haven't taken naam of krishna or rama i have not done my japa i have not sat for meditation i have not done dhyana never how insatiated how impatient we are when it comes to food when it comes to ahar uh, nidra maithun now i can't work any more i need sleep and please don't disturb me how often we have said that i am going to pray to lord krishna please don't disturb me doesn't happen because we are not more integrated so that is why gurudeva has while explaining this particular shloka he has specifically mentioned individually in their own freedom had themselves ordered in the past their own present environment it is our own order last station when i left the railway station and arrived and sat in the train the bag that i carried was my own bag in the next station when i got down and opened the bag it was full of dirt and i started cursing how can my bag be full of dirt because it was packed with the dirt by myself by merely changing his environment individual concern cannot make a progress a nice example of it because you have money make a sound proof room that will not help in meditation there is the room is not at fault we are at fault that is why yatna yatatam bhagavad gita is not predeterministic in that sense what shall i be doing is my kartavya in which environment i will be doing is my prarabdha i may not be having both the eyes my prarabdha 
yet I can say Ram, Ram, Ram. Prarabdha, Yatna. I've got two children, both are not listening to me. They are not properly there. Nobody is paying me. I am getting insulted in the office. I don't have even this. I don't have even that. Prarabdha. Even then, I sit for Bhagavad Gita. Yatna. Karta tha to kyu kiya ab kare pachtai boya ped babul ka aam kaha se aai. You have sown the acacia tree. You can't get mangoes. And the master stroke given by our own master at the end of first stanza is, first shloka is, if the previous stanza explained the rebirth of an ego, jiva, after the interval of existence in heavens, this stanza explains the lives of the few who soon after departing from one embodiment immediately arrive to this world. A live example can be taken for this. Amongst the disciples of Ramakrishna Paramahamsa, there were two brother disciples called Shashi Maharaj and Sharada Maharaj. They became Ramakrishna Nanda and Sharada Nanda in their monastic life. They were Guru Bandhu of Swami Vivekananda. Both of them, when they came to Ramakrishna Paramahamsa, Ramakrishna Paramahamsa said, both of you will be interested in Bible. They were both Brahmins, fluent in Sanskrit, knowing all the scriptures. But he said, you will be very fluent in Bible. And in the later life, it did happen so. In fact, Ramakrishnananda Maharaj was the in charge of Ramakrishna mission in Madras, in Chennai. He established the Matha, but he was many times called by the Christian missionaries to do worship of Christ and the way he is to perform even the, the father and the, the missionaries is to get surprised. How beautifully you do this worship and how you he, he is to remember Bible by heart. Uh, Advaita Siddhanti knowing Bible by heart, the reason when it was asked to Ramakrishna Paramahamsa he said, they both are nothing else but the accompanying people on the last supper of Jesus Christ. Now imagine Jesus Christ in 1st century. In 18th century, they came and they got Mukti. What happened between this 17th century? This clearly indicates that there is a continuous progression from the point where you have left for the further progress to be made. And that is why Tatratam buddhi sanyogam labhate paurva dehikam previous embodiment buddhi sanyoga what you carry forward from previous body to next body is nothing else except the hard disk. The entire PC is dismantled. Next time it could be a body of an iPad. But the hard disk or the memory will remain same. The files are same. Once power about power dehikam buddhi, it continues from there. So ask a question to yourself, or we can ask a question to ourselves. What is my propensity in my behavior? When I'm sitting quiet, what do I feel like doing? I can't sit quiet. Parva dehikam buddhi rajoguna. I feel like, you know, leaving all this and going to Himalayas. At least I will take seven days where I would like to just go there, study a scripture, be away from all this. Parva dehikam sannyasa vritti tyaga vairagya. So tatra tam buddhi sanyogam labhate parva dehikam. Yatate chatato. Yatate bhuyaha tataha. Again, the word yat has come. Yat, yatna, effort. By virtue of your karma vipaka siddhanta, you are carried forward like a baby from one cradle to the other cradle. That is prarabdha, what it does. But in the cradle, what you will be doing depends on what you do. 
कर्मना गहनो गति but a thing comes to the mind that you know when this is so called reborn happens and this linga sharira goes to the next sharira there must be a process by which it must be happening for example when we see an egg and then egg metamorphoses into larva and larva becomes a flower uh, or a butterfly similarly there must be some process in fact brahma sutra is a scripture that details how this happens how the linga sharira then takes dumrayana or devayana reaches where then in the form of rains it comes down then it goes into the soil and goes into the grains and those grains are then eaten by the father then that grain gets converted into the virya that virya then leads to the birth of this all explained there inscrutable although it's a very microscopic or subtle thing but the linga sharira is a fact and by yogic power you are able to awaken your samskar and you can read your past it is not difficult a yogi can remember as many lives as he wants so that he can completely see the picture that i started in first century like this and now i am here and i'll be going there that is because you have complete control on what is called as prakruti that's why we see many enlightened souls immediately calling somebody and saying that this is your last birth or the moment abedanand was seen his previous name was kali prasad when kali prasad came immediately ramakrishna paramahansa told him oh you are a yogi of past birth and this is your last birth तत्र तम बुद्धि संयोग लभते पौर्व देहिकम यतते च ततो भूयः द वन विद द एफर्ट्स देन टेक्स इट फॉरवर्ड्स टू द कल्मिनेशन समसिद्धो कल्मिनेशन परफेक्शन कुरुनंदन द जॉय ऑफ कुरुज कुरु अगेन द धातु इज क्रू डुअर्स the one who is an action nandana the joy of that doing the name of arjuna used here is a deliberate one kuru that means there is an yatna there yat the one who does his action or the karma in a perfect manner leading to the production of nothing else but bliss kuru nandana then gets into this that's why gurudev says such a born yogi completes his education much more easily than others since to him it is not an education but a revision this clearly explains us all the things that we have actually both if somebody in a that look gurudev was enjoying his college life you know and he just went for two years and pata nahi do saal mein kya hoga sir it doesn't that way those college there is some vasana that were left as is after scrubbing the pot some vasanas were left so that was completed exhausted he went there and things were done all job done perfection some siddho shankar acharya at the age of 6 and a half completed all four vedas darshanas he could not study because there was no acharya at the age of 7 he started his own school as acharya so shankar acharya became acharya shankar acharya at the age of 7 vallabh acharya became acharya at the age of 11 so much so that krishna dev raya when that debate happened and the application came from vallabh acharya he said how who is who has allowed the child to compete in vad vivad although he defeated everyone and got weight of his the, the the gold of his weight as the prize for that debate from where this is coming and why go so far mozart we know will form mozart a completely deaf man how can a deaf man be a musician and the best of his creation were when he was a child 
child prodigy as we call it it all comes from previous birth that is why it is just a revision for them vivekananda in the childhood itself mother found him so many times meditating and getting lost so much so that he had a cobra coming close to him all the children ran away he was still sitting there then people came they saw the cobra they were frightened after the cobra left they took the narendra the child and asked narendra narendra did you were you were you not afraid he said ma ma mother i was not aware that what was happening dhyanam at an age where we cannot imagine how much vairagya was developed in vivekananda as a child when he was a small child his mother used to close the windows when the beggar used to come because this boy used to give everything available in the hand once he gave very expensive vastram to a beggar from where this tendency of giving normally children keep collecting we all recall our own childhood this is because the impression प्रीत पुरानी कारनेरे चुग चुग कंकड़ खाए इफ यू हैव गोट तमो गुना इन द पास्ट यू विल डू सेम मिस्टेक अगेन सम पीपल से माई प्रॉब्लम इज एंगर आई एम वेरी एंग्री फ्रॉम वेरी एंग्री वेर फ्रॉम इट केम यू वेर वेरी एंग्री यू आर एंग्री सो वट डू आई डू यू आर एंग्री बिकॉज ऑफ प्रारब्ध सो वट डू आई डू यत्न try to control it now so what will happen so that in the next birth the anger will not be a major issue for me and that is why gurudeva statement not only does he discover in himself the knowledge that he had acquired in the past but easily finds him in himself knowledge without practice is a dull dreary load upon the shoulders of the seeker very this is this statement of gurudev is directly like an arrow should go inside the head brain heart whatever we call it knowledge without practice is dull and dreary meaning what occasional bhagavad gita is bound to be dull and dreary you have to dive deep into it suppose somebody takes wheat flour and keeps playing with it no and keeps testing it he will never find it interesting only when he works on it needs the dough out of it makes a round shape out of it puts it on the oven oven puts some little butter and bakes it properly then it becomes so tasty that he cannot leave it all this is abhyas so doing the same thing again and again till the ruchi or the interest is developed is the only way forward so that to get the interest in adhyatma our touch and go phenomena is not going to help us anywhere and how do i know that i am studying it ask one self a question how many hours i am putting in reading thinking shravan manana of adhyatma how much uh, for one movie so and so stupid dancing person on that hollywood charges that i know but this question never comes to the mind that what must have happened to gurudeva when he was to get up at 330 and take his bath with the cold ganga water and yet sit without any breakfast for the study this thought never comes we know the heroine's birth date we know heroine which film she has worked into interest and doing again and again you open the whatsapp and try to see what happened to that hero what happened to that interest shun all this away put lord in front keep repeating keep repeating name of the lord reading of the lord reading of the scripture vedo nitya adhiyatam acharya has already said nitya adhiyatam vedah we don't do that that is why in these two shlokas an assurance is given that the one who has already gone into an ascent need not worry because he will start from there but where is my ascent i have not even started walking so these are applicable to that nara arjuna not to me danava so first is the conversion of danava to nara and that is where the role of gurudeva comes who holds us by the shikha and pulls us towards that 
provided we do not raise our hands and stop that. Hariyo.